Hello to everyone who is watching this video. Uh, I'm Jimmy Mano, and uh, as you see on the screen, uh, my guest today is Musafir Tade. Uh, and uh, I thank you very much for your time to watch this video. And uh, as I said on this channel, there are many topics. Um, and today, uh, and one of those topics, uh, it's like, it's about education, it's about uh, scholarship. Uh, the reason why I invited Musafir so that he can tell us about um, one of the program, it's uh, one of the scholarship, uh, which is um, Irish Fellowship Program. Um, Safil has been uh, fully funded by that program. The reason why I just invited him so that he can tell us more. And, uh, and I think the, in this topic, in this video, many people, they can gain many information uh, about that uh, scholarship so that you can apply and uh, after getting uh, many information. So thank you, Safil, for accepting my invitation. And uh, just now, you can tell us your. Let's just uh, introduce yourself, and you tell us about uh, about you, where, who you are, where you are, what you are doing. So then we continue with our topic. Um, thank you very much um, for your invitation, Mr. Jimmy. And uh, um, my name, as you said, uh, is Afif Tade. Um, currently uh, residing in Dublin, the Republic of Ireland, as you mentioned. And uh, uh, regarding your topic, uh, I'm a recipient of the Irish Fellowship Program, 2019-2020, uh, and uh, I'm Rwandan by nationality. Thanks to, the, to your audience, uh, to those who will listen to you any sooner, or those who will listen to you in later. Thanks to welcome me again on your show. Okay, thank you very much. As I said, um, you are one of the scholars or just you, you have been fully funded by uh, that Irish fellowship, uh, fellowship program. Uh, that's, we are going to talk about it. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to ask you how and when did you know that scholarship? Uh, the year was in 2018 and uh, I knew about it just through word of mouth by a friend, actually who was not even interested in scholarship. But um, the scholarship has been there for quite a long time, but it was still, I would say, targeting the, those countries that are closely working with the, the government of Ireland. And uh, Rwanda was not by then included. So it was until 2018 that they expanded the, the reach, I would say, and uh, Rwanda was also included to the recipient countries. So when that friend saw it and, uh, recommended that to me, it gave it a shot. I started applying right away. And the, the application was through uh, Irish embassy in, in, in Uganda because we don't have it in Rwanda. So um, yeah, as, as, as we said from the beginning, it's called Irish Fellowship Program. So it means it targets the, those prospective applicants who are currently in the job. So you have to be working and they suggest a minimum of two years uh, experience on job. And you have to be willing to uh, enhance your career or improve your skill set so that when you come back to your job, you have more skills and you've built your, your, your capacity to perform better on your, in your career. So that's the main uh, umbrella of the scholarship and what it targets in general. OK, yeah, quite good. So. Maybe is there a way I just we can find all those information uh, so that you can share with us? Oh uh, yes, the the information the, I would say full package information is shared on the website, but also for those who are working uh, closely with the institutions or NGOs that are closely linked to the to the embassies in their respective countries. Uh, they get the information through invitation. Mm -hmm. So uh, invitation means that through the organization, organizations such as Oxfam, Concern, just to name a few, uh, some workers are invited to apply directly. But others like myself who don't have, who have not been working through uh, in those specific organizations, the information can be found on the website, which is, um, Irish fellowship program and the website will, I think we will have the chance to show it uh, during our, 
a conversation so we'll have yeah, to please uh, you can you can you can show us okay thank you very much i'm going to uh share the screen okay can you see my screen yeah i see it uh thank you oh uh, so uh, as I was, I was uh, as I was telling you, it's uh, the Irish scholarship program, and uh, it's a fully funded scholarship for specific countries. Um, by the way, the list of the countries can be also found on the on that website, and the website is IrishAidFellowship.ie. Uh, it's highlighted on this on this slide in the blue character. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Okay. As you can see, there is that strand of Ireland Fellowship Program for Africa, but it's also uh, it also uh, has other parts for other continents, uh, for regions like Asia and some parts of South America. So uh, the whole program doesn't only target Africa. So throughout this uh, website, you can scroll down and see for specific country, depending on where you, you want to or you intend to apply from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, jumping to that point, speaking about the eligibility, there is a list of countries and actually a scheme of such a uh, fellowship because it targets countries per scheme and per, I would say, kind of relation between those countries and the Department of uh, Ireland in charge of foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. When I say it's department, it's, it's an equivalent of uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. So mostly uh, those countries are, I would say, grouped in two categories. But overall, the package of the scholarship is quite similar to all countries. Yeah. If I can give an example, like one that targets Uganda or Rwanda or Tanzania, Mm -hmm. is quite different in naming to that that targets South Africa, but still what is the what is given to uh, a fellow is quite similar to everyone there. Okay. Yeah, and it's a fully funded fellowship. Uh, so what do you mean when you say like it's a fully funded uh, fellowship or a scholarship? Uh, yeah, when I say fully funded, it means that uh, you don't pay nothing from your own pocket. Okay. or from your parents' pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, so as soon as you qualify for this uh, for the fellowship, the country, which is Ireland, the hosting country, which is Ireland, takes you in charge of uh, every cost from the air tickets for airfare, mm -hmm. to your housing, to your tuition fees, to your health insurance, to your monthly stipend, and to your ticket back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe I would I may ask for whoever who is watching this uh, video. Uh, but this uh, scholarship or uh, is there just for a master's uh, student, for bachelor student, or just um, uh, wh what do you know about that? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, actually, that's a very interesting question. That that fellowship targets those applicants who want to pursue their studies for master's level. Mm -hmm. So, assumably, you've got your undergrad, uh, undergraduate degree, mm -hmm. then you've worked for two years or more as a prerequisite, mm -hmm. then you're eligible to apply. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, just from a master's uh, degree or program, and the, as well as for PhD, do you know any? No, no any PhD, about it? PhD is not included. So it's only for a uh, master's uh, degree. Yeah. Okay. There are also some, some uh, I would say some opportunities for PhD students, but mostly they come as uh, individual universities initiatives, not for the, for the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, initiative overall. So this one we are specifically talking about is just looking for those who wish to pursue their studies on a master's level. Okay, great. Yeah.
And if I have to add something else, uh, you may ask all an applicant or someone who wishes to who wishes to apply may ask him or herself. So must of the level, but which field? Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is a range of different fields, and the list can still be found on the website that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one has to mention that this scholarship is an, an uh, annual. It's 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 a, like annual recurring, so it's open every year, mm -hmm. but it has a specific time frame. And talking about time frame, uh, let me go to the for this slide. It's normally open between July and August. So I would highly recommend someone to keep an eye on the website and uh, check when it's open. Like if I try to look on it right now, mm -hmm. I, I did it. I did that exercise a bit earlier, and uh, it's closed for now. Okay. So it's until maybe June or July. There is no specific date, so that's why someone has to keep on uh, keep an eye. Mm -hmm. And once it's open, then it's there out to be for the application to begin. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. And if I have to go deep into detailing the application phases, uh, the first two to three months. Let's say if it's open in July, mm -hmm. it starts from July, August, and September for you as an applicant to prepare your documents and start your first phase of applying, which is get the documents ready and send them to your respective embassy. Okay. Because at the embassy, there is an agent working closely with the applicants mm -hmm. and who is in charge of all the issues related to this uh, fellowship. Oh, okay, great. Mm -hmm. So within the, the first month, three months, I would say, mm -hmm. the ball is in your hands as an applicant. Then after you sent, you've sent the your application package, mm -hmm. you wait for them to give you a response, which can be good or bad. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, then when uh, you've successfully gone through the first phase, then they give you a set of other next steps to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I can go through them right now, or maybe we may. Yeah, just look at that, please go on. Okay, uh, so let's go with the first phase, which I, I may call preliminary phase. You've decided to apply. Mm -hmm. And uh, you look on the websites, you find a list of documents you have to prepare. Uh, those documents include your, your degree, your undergrad degree, mm -hmm. certified, of course. And you need also um, a recommendation later from your employer. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, you have to be employed. At least and, two years. Uh, yeah. But, but it doesn't require to be employed on the same job for two years. Mm -hmm. So I may work, let's say, six months on one job, two months on another job. It's a, what, what it matters is like you have to show that you've worked for at least two years or approximately. Okay. But does it mean like before, I, before the application process uh, or just like in general in your life? Because it can happen. Imagine, that, imagine like someone is applying now and uh, maybe he has been working. Uh, three years, but uh, not recently. So maybe like other three years, it has been a, a jobless. But I mean, whether that a, a two years experience, uh, just job, whether it, it has to be recently before the person applies for the um, fellowship. To my knowledge, it doesn't matter. All that really matters is for you to be able to show that you've got an employer who shows that you've been working there. Because oh. remember the main target is when you, you complete your program and you go back, mm -hmm. they assumably think that you have to go back and apply what you, you acquired during your program. Okay. So that's where the employer thing mm -hmm. came into place. Oh, great. Because it has to be something active. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, if maybe you work, then stopped. It's, it doesn't have to be that long. Oh, okay. I, I would say that long time off, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, other documents include recommendation letters from the academic side. Mm -hmm. That said, it means two professors from your former university who know you. Okay. Or who knew you when you were studying there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have also to prepare uh, a personal statement, which is, I would say, very, very pivotal to your success or failure. Because uh, that's where you show or you showcase yourself. It's like you sell, you're trying to sell your idea why you want to be considered for that fellowship. So like motivational. Yeah. Some 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 uh, people call it motivational later, others call it personal statement or personal or personal intent, I think. So it's it has different names, but overall it's the same thing. Mm. It's personal statement. So you have to really, really be sure that you've written a really good one because it counts a lot. Yeah, of during course, the convince them and the, yeah, yeah, that should be chosen. Yeah, because as as from my experience and knowledge so far, the first thing they jump on during screening is that piece of paper. It has to be okay. We call it piece of paper, but you send it online. So yeah, that piece of writing has to really be reflecting your utmost on what you want to do with the fellowship. Okay. And of course, there are other uh, minor documents like your passport, like your your photo, which are not really that uh, hard to, to, to get. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I may have forgotten anything else, but those are the major documents you have to get and send them to the embassy uh, okay so you mean like the under undergraduate degree just a certificate recommendation from employer and even lecturers or and even the personal statement and the other identification so like ID identities like uh, passport and whatever oh yeah okay great so that is in the, uh, that's the, the first that's the first phase of the application mm. then if you happen to go through the screening which takes place today to the, to the embassy mm -hmm. they inform you through mail that you've reached the next step and the next step is uh, uh, mainly focusing on interviews and your, your your english proficiency so you have to sit for english exam international exam which is they prefer IELTS, mm -hmm. but you can also sit for TOEFL, for instance, or any other uh, equivalent exam. Okay. And the they score, the minimum score has to be 6.5, uh, but some, some universities require seven and above. So I would, I would advise to aim at uh, scoring higher than 6.5. So, even if like someone has uh, studied in a uh, English uh, just subject or just coming from a, an English speaking country, so it doesn't matter. So the applicant should even uh, show uh, those uh, language proficiency certificate as, I, as you said, TOEFL and the IELTS. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter where, whether you've, your language of instruction has been English uh, or you are coming from an English speaking country. Mm -hmm. the, you, or the, it's like a common denominator for everyone who is applying. You have to show that uh, you've got that score. Okay. Yeah. Then after score, uh, providing that score, because, and by the way, that's the, 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 the fee for that exam is paid for the, from the embassy. So you don't pay for yourself. So that program they pay, they, they even pay for, they do. for that. They do. Okay. If you already have your score, like in my case, I had it. So mm -hmm. they didn't pay it. Oh, okay. They didn't pay me back, I would say. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have it yet, they pay for it. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, that is in a detailed application or just uh, in here in the interviews? Uh, I mean, the second phase. Okay. Uh, there is that part of interviews, and uh, those interviews are general. They are generic, so it's not it's not serious yet. Yeah. I'm okay. saying. Yeah. It's uh, actually in, in most cases they they invite you to the embassy. Mm -hmm. You go there physically. You have personal interviews, generic interviews, like in a group, and you go back home. You sit for that exam. So as you said just at, at the beginning, say like the islands uh, embassy in Rwanda. Uh, they, we don't have in Rwanda. It's in a. Yeah. We... So if you're in Rwanda, you have to travel to Kampala. Okay, but here now we don't have it. We don't have it. Oh, okay. At home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, after you've scored, then the next step is applying for universities. Okay. You can't. That's that's very crucial. You can't apply for a university if you haven't yet mm -hmm. provided that score, the English score. Mm -hmm. So once you got it, then they give you a green light to apply for the universities. Oh, you've got okay. to apply to have like three choices. They give you a list of universities. It's all it's it's a, it's all on the website. The list of universities and the programs they offer. So you choose your own program, then you apply. So first of all, just when you get uh, when you're allowed just for that uh, scholarship or fellowship, as they call, then the uh, to admission to apply for admission, then that's it comes after. I know. Uh, for on this on this particular fellowship, you apply for the admission before you get the uh, the scholarship. Ah, but within yeah. the process. Yeah, it's within the process. I would okay. say second phase. Okay. You apply for the for the admission. Mm -hmm. Then it takes a month or two. Uh, that goes up to February, the following year. Mm -hmm then universities may take quite uh it's very different times depending on the their own uh time frame corresponding but it takes a while then they have to wait for you which they do mm -hmm. then if you happen to get an admission then you send it back to the to the to the embassy mm -hmm. then, then now you can go to the next step okay great which is the interviews again. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned earlier, so that's here, they are very serious. Yeah, now those interviews are, oh, yeah, serious because it's now one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. but it's like, I would say like defending your cause. Okay. You've, get, you've got what you wrote in the personal statement. You've gone through different phases of application and you've got your admission. Now it's time to uh, showcase or just express your intentions and uh, your aspirations, I would say. And on this phase, it's more like trying to show them what you're able of and what you're, you're uh, expecting from the program mm -hmm. and what you intend, how you intend to use the skills you will get okay. after the completion of your program which is actually like something like a repetition of what you wrote in the personal statement. That's the main reason why I insisted that it has to be a really good personal statement. Okay. But yeah. uh, before you continue here, just as we said, like the, it's like, um, is it, pass, it, it should be personal, just so you should be with the interviewer or just you can even, it can be like a virtual interview. How yeah, it, it depends on the, on the on how the, the embassies have arranged it in most cases um i mean before covid it was personal mm -hmm. uh one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. and uh during the covid it was it was on on uh via these platforms like mm -hmm. zoom teams mm -hmm. and others uh overall this phase we for i would i would i wouldn't say it's not really scary it's not because it's like the final and it's like a repetition of what you've done before. So it doesn't even take that long and uh, it's quite straightforward answering. It's like just trying to uh, show your experience during the application process mm -hmm. and link it to what you expect from the universities 
the university that uh, gave you admission mm -hmm. and what do you think that will help you afterwards? And also they take time to try to explain to you or to tell you about, or to give you more information about okay. what you may be facing when you are studying in another country that you're not familiar with. Okay. Yeah. So um, then after that, they, the, there is like two or three weeks period, then they, they give you the final decision. The, that's why you know whether you go to the offer or it's, things have gone the other way around. Okay. Yeah. But in most cases, I would say, when you reach the final interviews, mm -hmm. it's really very rare that, that uh, you don't qualify. So at that phase, you're almost sure that you will qualify. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here is the summary of what we said about the application journey, uh, journey overall. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to summarize it in, into six major steps, which mm -hmm. uh, the first step is the preparation of required documents, which we mentioned earlier. Then after the documents, you send the documents to the Irish embassy in your country or the nearest from your country. Mm -hmm. Then there is a selection uh, screening, I would say, screening time for the applicants because uh, there are hundreds of applications there. Mm -hmm. So they try to get the best out of the best, I would say. Then there is the English test, which is there, ILTS in most countries or any other uh, uh, test that's, that's, that's equivalent to this one. Mm -hmm. Then they give you um, a green light to apply for admission from universities. The list of universities can be found on the on the link of the uh, website shared. Then the interviews and the offer for the successful candidates. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very clear. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, if like the person has all the requirement and they just, uh, that way i think this uh, it's clear it can be uh, successfully just the person can successfully get it okay um what is in the in the third uh, slide there's something that uh it's like a ah. cheat sheet on how to prepare if you really think that you want to apply for it mm -hmm. Um, I think I've written this few lines out of my own experience. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, some people just rush on writing stuff at the end after spending a lot of time waiting, then they rush to write just in, in the remaining few days. So uh, this process is, uh, is not really complicated and is straightforward because you work uh, hand in hand with the embassy, if you want to, they guide you through all the steps. Oh. They are there for you. But also, you have to take your part. And the first phase is your own part. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's really very, very important to check the website. And when it's open, I mean, when this, the program is open, to start right away your journey. And you have to be having like a big picture of what you want to achieve and I would say uh, unpack it into very, very easy steps to follow. Oh, okay. And yeah, make your own schedule and know that you will be hitting the deadlines because deadline sometimes can be um, really troubling, you know? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so having requ uh, required documents in advance give you enough time to reflect on what you wrote and maybe make corrections when it be. Writing a really good personal statement, as I said, mm. and on the personal statement, I would recommend to uh, either, if you're not experienced on writing them, to have like another person who help you for proofreading and maybe correcting you. As yeah. you know, it's easy to write and convince yourself, but if someone else just has an eye on what you've, you've done, 
Yeah. He or she may say, like hey, when, it, when someone has written something and just you are you you proofread it and it's like you are the same mind just who used or who just composed that text and then uh, if there's something wrong it might happen that you don't see it so that's why like in, uh, needing someone else that it would do help so much exactly okay yeah and then if you know you think that you need to really prepare a lot about the iots tests yeah it gives you also a window to start preparing of the right after sending the documents you may start really thinking of preparing yourself for this Yes, because uh, but here yeah. you, you you insisted on uh, I I as a I R T S, but is it even uh, as a even uh, even the trifer? It's a it's quite it's it's not similar, but they are equivalent in a way. Mm -hmm. For instance, they say you have to score six point five out of nine in that I L T S. That's if my memory gets it well it will, it's an equivalent of 560 points in toefl ah, okay. so it's a, it has standards and okay. uh yeah okay yeah so you can decide what you you can choose what to do or if you want to go for iots or toefl it's fine Oh, okay. But the reason why uh, maybe on, on the website you will see it's IOTS that they recommend, it's just because IOTS is British. Yeah. Yeah, and Ireland and Great Britain is kind of like sister brother. <laughs> so, yeah. but if you decide to go with TOEFL, there is no, there is no uh, mistake there. You can mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So reminding the people now, yes, we are talking about the Irish Fellowship Program. Uh, it's uh, just kind of the uh, scholarship. And um, as I said, uh, or just uh, on this channel, we are talking about some topics. And um, that's why today we are talking about the education, uh, the uh, scholarship, how we can get the scholarship. And uh, today, as I said, uh, we are talking about the Irish Fellowship Program and uh, Musafir Fadeh is one of the students who has uh, fully funded and they got that, uh, that uh, scholarship or fellowship. So he's explaining, uh, just he's um, giving us some information about that scholarship, when, uh, where you can get the information through the website and the, the requirements, uh, the uh, application process. So that's why, that's where we are, we are now in, on this topic in this video. Okay, I think, uh, You've given a lot of information needed, and uh, maybe I would ask. I want to ask you, just like a, a personal. So, what has motivated you just to apply for this uh, scholarship? Because there are many scholarship they are uh, given by different countries, and uh, but why this one? What has motivated you? Um, on my personal level, I was motivated by the fact that this is straightforward. Mm -hmm. I, I've tried a couple of other scholarships. And by the time I was applying on this one, same time I was applying it on Chevening program, which is a British program. But uh, this one is really, really very simple and straightforward. And the other key is that the embassy is there to assist you all to make things easier for you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel alone during my application because every time something was unclear to me, I knew there that department in the embassy where I should okay. ask ABC information and they will um, respond to me in time moving forward. So um, I would say that really motivated me. Plus, um, of course, also I was I was more into looking for the program, which was quite difficult to find in other universities and other countries. And uh, yeah, um, generally two points as I mentioned: easy way to apply, and the program itself. I wanted to to study. Uh, okay, so. 
as just we are coming to the end of our, our video, our topic today, um, I would like to ask you if there's something else that maybe um, you want to say, maybe that you forgot or just any other information. Um, and maybe even you can just remove that, uh, that presentation and... Uh, All right. Um, thank you. I would just uh, want to highlight that there are, first of all, thanks for the for your initiative because there are really, really lots of uh, those who wish to pursue their further studies and don't have means and also don't have the information yeah. that there are some opportunities out there. So thanks for that. And uh, I'd recommend that even those who now can get the information, they have to really put some quality in what they prepare for their applications. Mm -hmm. Because the process is really, uh, I would say quite straightforward, but also it's competitive. Mm -hmm. That means we may be a few applying from my country, but you don't know others applying from an, another different country. And since we all converge to one scholarship and we want to go in the same country, on a higher level, mm -hmm. they will filter to try to get the best from the best. Because once you apply, I imagine you're already the best. Yeah. But again, from a bunch of bests, mm -hmm. They want to filter best of the best. And that's why uh, I insist on really, really trying to put more efforts on what uh, you prepare for your application and defend your, your application moving okay. forward. Uh, just like one question, uh, do you know, is there like a number of the uh, people that they select uh, each year so that maybe to know how many, if you have any idea about how many people do they take? Uh, like uh, in, take? in a specific country or in general? In general. Uh, in general, there, oh, okay, I can, I, can, I can make an average, I would say, from my cohort until the, this, this year's cohort. Mm -hmm. It's around 200 to 230. And that is from African countries, not all uh, specific African countries and specific Asian countries. And each country has uh, its own quota, I would say. So it's not, maybe they may pick, they may pick, uh, they may pick, let's say 20 people in Vietnam mm -hmm. and pick three people in Rwanda. Oh, just, okay. as, just like an example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but when you're applying, you really don't have to look into how many people they will select from a given country. Yeah. All you do is just compete. With just like try to bid like one, if like it's a one person, then I should be the one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's one yeah, person. Good, it's a good tip. Because like once you just know, just you are competing the, with yourself and the, no one else, then uh, then it should be like uh, amongst the tops and the uh, people just to be selected. Yeah. Okay. And the good thing is uh, on the on the second phase, you you may be able to know those applying from your own country because you're all invited mm -hmm. for those generic uh, meetups and uh, tips and interviews. So you all uh, you're all invited, and that's an opportunity because you can team up and just share your own experience and tricks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can learn from your fellow applicants as they can learn also from you. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. So Mr. Musafil, um, just as I said, we are, we are, now, we are now ending our, our topic today. Um, and uh, I, first of all, as I said, I thank you very much for your time and uh, for sharing with us such incredible information. And I hope just it will, it will help many people. And um, as uh, I would 
say that it is very helpful. And uh, thank you for everything. Just I know that uh, getting such information and to prepare that uh, it asked like uh, a lot of time and uh, yeah, for your time for that. And uh, to our viewers, uh, thank you for watching this video. And I think uh, you have gained a lot of information that may uh, help you for your application or just your uh, whatever you plan to do with the, uh, if you want to study abroad, if you want to study in Ireland, as uh, we have been talking about the Irish Fellowship Program. And uh, please, uh, you can uh, subscribe for this YouTube channel so that you can get some more, more information for, for the further uh, video that will be uploaded so that you are amongst the first person just to get it. And uh, you can even click on the ring so that you, you get, you get uh, notified. And uh, you can even share this video if you like, and if you know some of your relatives, you are some friends just who, who may just get some information and uh, you can share this, uh, this video. If you like, you can just, of course, you can uh, click on the like. And uh, if you have any question uh, or any uh, proposal, you can just write in the comment section so that we, we know. And maybe next time, just we can come to your question, to your proposal, any suggestion. So that's, that's right. So Mr. Phil, any closing word? I just say thank you uh, for your invitation once more and uh, thanks for uh, sharing the, uh, the, this information to your audience, uh, those who really uh, want to start or um, having relatives who want to start, they, they, they a way or the journey towards looking for scholarships, then I would recommend you uh, stay tuned and watch what you share. Thank you very much. Oh, great. And uh, I said like this one, it's one of the uh, scholarship just you have been talking about, uh, Irish Fellowship Program, and uh, maybe in the coming uh, videos, we'll be talking about other different uh, scholarship. So thank you. And uh, I wish everyone a good day, a good moment and be blessed.